guys, it's Luke, and you're watching Luke the Gathering. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching the channel, I really appreciate it. Hey, I was at my local game store, Davis Cars and Games in Davis, California, at UC Davis, and um, participated in another Friday Night Magic, and I uh, had a lot of fun, but <clears throat> as I have for almost every draft, I went one and three. I, I don't know what it is. I can't, like, get past this one and three business. It just is nutty. One and three, one and three, one and three. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the deck and let's see what you think of it. What could I have improved? It's a blue-white deck dealing with spirits and graveyard stuff coming back. But uh, we'll talk about the deck. Maybe you can tell me what could I have done better. All right. Like I said, blue and white is what I ended up going with. And I mean, I'm okay with blue and white decks. I just, they're not like the most fun for me to play. It's not what I'm looking to go into, but you kind of get the cards you're dealt, right? So what did I get? We got Homestead Courage. This was actually not initially in the deck, but I put it in from the sideboard, kept it in. Flare of Faith. Um, this is a combat trick that I think is actually really, really nice. Sometimes you can get the indestructible, especially if you have it on a human, and if you're playing white, you're definitely going to have some humans to put this on. Now, it turns out there were like two other, at least two other people drafting white, so I could not find very many pump spells like this, combat tricks, and it's because the other guys took them all, and <laughs> that's what happens when you're in a draft. So this one I got, and then Blessed Defiance, which is a combat trick that I don't really like that much, but I took it because it was like the only pump spell I could get besides the Flare of Faith, and I was really lucky because this Flare of Faith was my last pick, actually was handed to me as the last card, which blew me away that it wasn't taken by one of the other white players. Uh, Candle Trap, not my favorite removal because... With white, you know, you're trying to be aggressive and attack. And Candle Trap still lets the opponent's creature that's in Candle Trap block. So they just can't attack. But um, I was kind of relying on, well, you know, if my spirits come back with Disturb, then at least they're flying, and so maybe I can get them by the air. And I ended up drafting lots of flyers. So I was hoping Candle Trap would do okay for me. And it was okay. Um, we have Startle. I do like Startle a lot. Kind of saves you a little bit a few times. Prevents a little bit of damage. Gets you that 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. And allows you to draw a card. So it does a lot. And there was this one turn where I had two Startles, two islands. And I was trying to decide, should I mulligan? And I had just watched a video saying, you know, try not to mulligan if you can help it. And I had two startles, which means two card draws. If they're attacking me with, you know, a 2-2 or something like that, I'm going to prevent that damage. I'm going to be able to stay alive. Turns out I wasn't drawing my other land for four more turns. <laughs> and it was just horrible. And that stuff happens. So startle. Revenge of the Drowned. Um, I kept going back and forth between this and a counter spell. Um, I already have a counterspell in this deck, so uh, I went for Revenge of the Drowned. And it was a little back and forth. This would go into the sideboard, the counterspell would come back. But, you know, as it would, as it was, like, it turns out I should have just, I don't know what, I should have just kept one in and not the other. Because when I needed the counterspell, I had this card in. When I needed this card, I had the counterspell. It was just nuts how uh, just things weren't working out. Dissipate was the other counter spell. This one worked well. I mean, I used it in every game that I that I had it. I mean, really nice. In fact, in my final round where I won the, the round, this card just won me the game because I dissipated one of their large creatures that came out and then they just scooped. So Dissipate did well. And someone said, don't put counter spells in your deck. Well, I did, and it, it worked out. And I actually like counter spells. I think they're a nice little surprise. I've used counter spells for all sorts of important things in limited. So I don't know. Maybe I'm not that great, and they're really not that great. 
but I found them very useful. Uh, here's another startle. I got like th two or three Gale Drifters. It's an expensive card to put out to four drops, so I scaled back. No, I think I got two, scaled it down to just one. Bait Hook Angler did nice jobs for me. 2 1 with Disturb comes back for only two. So this was always a good pick. Always a good pick. Gavany Dawn Guard didn't do a whole lot for me. 3 3, uh, decent stats, can find you. Find you um, creatures, but didn't do a whole lot. And I hear a lot of good things about Gavany Dawnguard in podcasts and people talking about Limited. In my experience, Gavany Dawnguard is a nice 3 3, but that's about it. Cathar Commando was nice. Uh, he can be used like a removal spell. You know, if you're getting attacked by something with, you know, three or less toughness, you can flash this guy in, surprise people, and block. Um, it was he was he was good. I got two of them. Sort of my, you know, little lower drop guys there. Gavany Trapper was also decent. Unruly Mob decent. Chaplain of Arms was nice because this was a card I always ended up throwing into the graveyard when I had the ability to, and you know he comes back as a two one with first strike and flying. That's good. And each creature you control has Ward 1 as well. So, some protection. I really like this card. It is an uncommon. Loyal Griff, also a really nice uncommon. Flashes in for 3, flying. And when Loyal Griff enters the battlefield, you can return another creature you control to its hand. So, this guy gives you some options. A 2-2 two -two in the air for 3. Um, yeah, good deal. I like this guy. Gavany, Silversmith, look, I drafted three of them. Three of them, and they were all in the deck. Um, maybe that was too many, but I, 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 maybe not. I mean, you're getting a lot of, you know, White's all this about this one plus one plus one stuff. Counters and Coven and all of this. So I thought having three wasn't bad. I always had a Gavany in the, in the, um, in the deck or hand in each game, and I think he worked out pretty decently. It's just... Um, I don't know. He is a four drop, and so he he can be quite expensive, especially if the, your opponent is playing cards that are cheaper. You know, he's get he's kind of going wide on you. That makes it tough, a bit tough. So, but I drafted three of them. This was a really expensive card, but when it came down, it it did really well for me. The Phantom Carriage. I was talking about um, what card was it? The, oh yeah, the Chaplain of Arms being discarded. The Phantom Carriage was the one that was finding it. Because when it comes into play, you can search the library for a card with flashback or disturb and then put it in the graveyard. So oftentimes the Chaplain of Arms would be found and then thrown in there. Because I wanted the Flying for Strike Ward. But 4-4 is a really nice statted um, line for this guy. And did some good work. Spectral Adversary was okay. Um, I don't know if you find this, but I always find that the adversaries come out too early. Don't you think? I, like They come out really early, and then you know you don't have enough mana to do the pumping stuff that you wanted to do. The most I could do is add one plus one plus one counter to it, which just makes it a three two. It still has flash and flying, which is okay. But honestly, Spectral Adversary, I think, could have done more for me, but didn't do much in this tournament. Brutal Cathar, this was really nice when it came out, because when you play this creature, you exile a creature and opponent controls. So that's really cool. It's, it's removal. And then when it becomes Knight, it becomes Moonrage Brute, and it has First Strike, it's a 3-3, three, three. it has Ward, where do they have to pay 3 life? That's sweet. And what's really awesome is when you get uh, the day cycle turn back, Becomes Brutal Cathar again, and you get to exile another of their creatures. I think that is that is so cool. That is great. That is a great ability. So I really like Brutal Cathar, and this was my first pack, first pick. Uh, the Spectral Adversary was second pack, first pick, so there we go. Here is what I had otherwise um, in the sideboard. I had another Clarion 
Cathars. I just thought Gavini was better, the Silversmith, than this guy. This guy gets you a 1-1. One, one. They're both 4 drops. But I just thought that getting counters was more important. So I could have replaced one of the Gavinis with this, but I just didn't feel the need to. Here's that other Gale Drifter I talked about. The larger zombie didn't do much. Devious Cover-Up was the other sort of counterspell I was hinting at putting in. It's a 4, like 2 and 2 blue. It's a lot. But I found that, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Sometimes I just wish I, I put it in. Uh, this is just all the other stuff in there. And then we also got Consider. Storm Rider Spirit, which is cool. It's Flash Flying 3-3, but it costs 4 in a blue. It's so expensive. Got another Cathar Commando. I just picked up this Curse of Silence and never was going to use it. Uh, this was one of the last cards picked. It's a rare, so got an extra rare. That's hardly worth anything, probably. A couple... Oh, I was almost going to go into Red, Harvest Height, Infiltrator, Seize the Storm, Pax Betrayal, Band of the Post, Voldaren Stinger, Mounted Dread Knight, Pax Betrayal, Ardent Elementalist, and, I don't know, Arcane Fusion just came in at the end, and then a Storm uh, Skrillex came in at the end. This is a foil. I would have loved... Blue-Red is one of my favorite color combos to play in this set, and Storm Skrillex is one of my favorite cards. I'm glad I didn't try for Blue-Red, because that was not going to work out at all, uh, looking at the cards that went around in the draft. So, uh, that was it. The deck went, uh, like I said, one and... Well, one and two, I should say. Only won one game out of the three. Uh, and when I say game, I mean rounds. Ugh. So here we go. I actually got, for the win, you know, they give you packs for winning. And another... Oh, it's a set booster. I didn't even realize they gave out a set booster. I thought it was a draft booster, but they gave out a set booster. Which I think is actually cooler. So let's see what we got. We got the art card. We got an island. Flip the switch. Wolf, Brood Weaver, Rise of the Ants, Tavern, Ruffian, Dawnheart, Rejuvenate. This is like in every. Got so many of these. Flame Channeler, Covetous Castaway, a Smoldering Egg is what we have here. Smoldering Egg is the rare end of Fading Hope. So nothing crazy, really. Smoldering Egg, kind of a fun card to have. But this is the winnings right here. So, had a lot of fun. Next week, I'm really sad. I am, I'm on a job next Friday evening, so I'm not going to make it to Friday Night Magic. So I'm glad I was able to do this week, and I've actually not missed Friday Night Magic for many weeks in a row. But this coming week, I will be missing it, and that makes me sad. But um, I am looking for a playgroup for Commander. I'm starting to put together some Commander decks. Hopefully I can do that. Thanks for watching, guys, and listening and all this. I'll see you next time.